Elon Musk just placed a $97.4 billion bid to buy the nonprofit that controls OpenAI. Meta unveils Partner, an open source research framework supporting seamless human robot collaboration. And lastly, Ilya Sutskever's secretive startup, Safe Superintelligence, is eyeing a massive $20 billion valuation. Meanwhile, we still have no clue what they're actually working on. Let's get into it. So the beef between Elon Musk and Sam Altman intensifies. Musk is now actively trying to take back control of OpenAI with a massive bid of $97.4 billion. It states here, a consortium led by Elon Musk said on Monday it has offered $97.4 billion to buy the nonprofit that controls OpenAI, months after the billionaire sued the artificial intelligence startup to block it from transitioning into a for-profit firm. Musk's bid could ratchet up long-standing tensions with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman over the future of the startup at the heart of a boom in generative AI technology. So I'm sure most of you are already well aware of everything that's led up to their beef and why Musk has been trying to take down Sam Altman ever since he left OpenAI back in 2018. I actually made an entire video breaking down the full history of their fallout, so I'll pop that up on screen for those who want a deep dive. But just to give you guys a quick, simplified version so we're all caught up, Musk was one of the original co-founders of OpenAI, alongside Sam Altman, Ilya Suchkover, Greg Brockman, and a few other prominent figures in the industry. However, after multiple disagreements with now CEO Sam Altman over company control and profit structure, he left, claiming that OpenAI had zero chance of succeeding without him. And well, we all know how that turned out. But here's the issue. Musk's initial $45 million investment was what got OpenAI off the ground in the first place. Now, as OpenAI shifts into a for-profit company built on its nonprofit past, Musk has tried and failed countless times to take them to court over it. Which brings us to this, his latest and most drastic move yet, to take back control of what he believes is rightfully his. It's time for OpenAI to return to the open source, safety-focused force for good it once was, Musk said in the press release. We will make sure that happens. So, so what would this deal actually mean? Well, if Musk Consortium succeeds in this $97.4 billion bid, we could potentially see a full-scale merger between OpenAI and XAI, his own AI company. That would bring OpenAI's cutting-edge models under his direct control, which could shake up the entire AI landscape. But here's the big question. Would this actually be a win for AI transparency and safety, like Musk claims? Or is this just another billionaire power move? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Also, Sam Altman actually responded to this. He posted on X, No thank you, but we will buy Twitter for $9.74 billion if you want. Safe to say he didn't take the offer too kindly. Musk fired back, simply replying, Swindler. So we've got a bit of a Drake versus Kendrick beef going on here, except instead of rap battles, it's two billionaires battling over the future of AI and humanity itself. What a time to be alive. Now, speaking of Sam Altman, he recently published a brand new blog post titled Three Observations. Altman doesn't write blog posts often, but when he does, they're usually insightful and give us a glimpse into what's coming next. While this new one is fascinating, it also tells us what we already know. He states, systems that start to point to AGI are coming into view, and so we think it's important to understand the moment we are in. AGI is a weakly defined term, but generally speaking, we mean it to be a system that can tackle increasingly complex problems at human level in many fields. In some sense, AGI is just another tool in this ever taller scaffolding of human progress we are building together. In another sense, it is the beginning of something for which it's hard not to say this time is different. The economic growth in front of us looks astonishing, and we can now imagine a world where we cure all diseases, have much more time to enjoy with our families, and can fully realize our creative potential. In a decade, perhaps everyone on Earth will be capable of accomplishing more than the most impactful person can today. So while these are incredibly ambitious claims, it is again not something we haven't heard of before. But here is where it starts to get really interesting. Altman lays out three key observations about the economics of AI. Number one, the intelligence of an AI model roughly equals the log of the resources used to train and run it. These resources are chiefly training compute, data, and inference compute. So the more you put into a model, the more you get out of it, and there hasn't been any signs of that slowing down. Number two, the cost to use a given level of AI falls about 10x every 12 months, and lower prices lead to much more use. You can see this in the token cost from GPT-4 in early 2023 to GPT-4.0 in mid-2024, where the price per token dropped about 150x in that time period. 
And number three, the socioeconomic value of linearly increasing intelligence is super exponential in nature. A consequence of this is that we see no reason for exponentially increasing investment to stop in the near future. So to sum that up, these models are predictably getting smarter with no slowdown in sight. They're getting 10x cheaper every year, leading to mass adoption. And the value of investing in AI is growing exponentially, pushing even more investment into the space. Now, the question is, what is this all going to lead to? Well, of course, we're talking AGI and eventually ASI, but in the more short term, he paints a picture here of what society and the economy could potentially look like. Let's imagine the case of a software engineering agent, which is an agent that we expect to be particularly important. Imagine that this agent will eventually be capable of doing most things a software engineer at a top company with a few years of experience could do for tasks up to a couple of days long. It will not have the biggest new ideas, it will require lots of human supervision and direction, and it will be great at some things, but surprisingly bad at others. Still, imagine it as a real but relatively junior virtual coworker. Now, imagine a thousand of them, or one million of them. Now, imagine such agents in every field of knowledge work. In some ways, AI might turn out to be like the transistor economically, a big scientific discovery that scales well and that seeps into almost every corner of the economy. We don't think much about transistors or transistor companies, and the gains are very widely distributed. But we do expect our computers, TVs, cars, toys, and more to perform miracles. So that is actually a really interesting comparison. I haven't heard of AI being compared to the transistor in this way before, but when you think about it, it makes sense. And the picture Altman is painting with this software engineering agent is actually a lot closer than people might think. As we know, OpenAI has already launched two agents so far. Operator, which can browse the web autonomously and perform tasks for you, and Deep Research, an agent that can conduct in-depth research on the web autonomously and generate summarized reports based on its findings. And based on this recent clip of Sam Altman speaking at the University of Tokyo, it looks like OpenAI has already been making insane progress towards this software engineering agent. Take a look. The progress over the, the recent scale is quite amazing. Our, our very first reasoning model um, was like a top one millionth competitive programmer in the world. People thought that was very impressive. It's like, wow, an AI, it's, you know, the millionth best people that do this, that's pretty good. Um, we then had a model that got to like a uh, top 10,000. Uh, 03, which we talked about publicly in December, is the 175th best program, competitive programmer in the world. I think our internal benchmark is now around 50, and maybe we'll hit number one by the end of this year. So that's like an amazing rate of scale for more compute in this new paradigm, and we don't see any signs of that stopping. So I'll leave the link to the full blog post in the description if you want to check it out. He goes on to discuss concepts like UBI or Universal Basic Compute and makes some other pretty insane statements. But basically, we now have multiple public accounts of Sam Altman talking about a software engineering agent, or at least an internal model that is exceptionally good at coding. By the way, before we move on, did any of you guys catch OpenAI's ad during the big game? Personally, I missed it live, but I saw it later on X, and honestly, I didn't think it was that great. I mean, I get the message they're trying to convey, but for a general audience, I'm not sure if it really resonated. I'm curious to hear what you guys thought about it though, let me know in the comments. In other AI news, Meta unveiled Partner, their research framework for seamless human-robot collaboration. We're open sourcing a large-scale benchmark, dataset, and large planning model that we hope will enable the community to effectively train social robots. So this is a bit of a new approach to humanoid robotics. Instead of just training robots to complete specific tasks, Meta is focusing on getting these robots accustomed to working in human environments alongside people. Take a look. Typically, when we see a robot, it's working in isolation. But that won't be our future. Robots and humans live and work side by side, communicate naturally. At Metafair, we have made research breakthroughs that are getting us much closer to socially intelligent robots that can enhance our daily lives. What we've accomplished is first of its kind and evaluated at scale making it advanced enough that it is easy to imagine what it can mean for our busy lives. Tidying up, taking deliveries, helping cook, the possibilities are endless. We have set benchmarks for everyday tasks and developed a data set now with over 100,000 natural language instructions. With this data set, we have trained a large planning model that reasons and plans for everyday tasks in dynamic environments, including in the presence of humans. Our Habitat 3 platform is the fastest simulator 
for training AI models with robots and humans together. And with our simulation training, we can generate data in the thousands, resulting in models that are faster than state-of-the-art. Our work is focused on human-robot collaboration. Today, we are using a mixed reality headset. Communication is natural and conversational. For example, in this demo, I'm thirsty, can you get something to drink? Prompts a search for a water bottle or a can, demonstrating the model's dynamic planning and replanning capabilities in a complex environment that it hasn't been specifically trained in. And when a human is present, the model adjusts and replans its actions based on the human's actions. For example, in a demo, let's clean up the living room. When a toy the robot was intending to pick up is removed, the model replans and moves on to another toy. This is a result of innovative AI training using over 200 simulated homes in our Habitat 3.0 platform, where we have added human-like avatars. Once trained, the same embodied AI drives a robust real-world experience. And now we don't have to learn from scratch in real-world environments, but can deploy models learned in simulation directly onto a robot. With the breakthrough large planning model research work we've done at Metafair, a future where we can collaborate with a robot that can reason and plan to our benefit is not far away. Now, I know that was a bit of a longer clip, but this is just fascinating. I really like their approach. Instead of designing robots to replace humans, they're building them to be more of a collaborator or a human enhancer, if that makes sense. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this project. Now, switching gears, Google DeepMind just published a new paper introducing the latest version of Alpha Geometry. They state, we present Alpha Geometry 2, a significantly improved version of Alpha Geometry introduced in a previous 2024 paper, which has now surpassed an average gold medalist in solving Olympiad geometry problems. So you may recall back in July of 2024, Google DeepMind made headlines when their AI managed to achieve a silver medal at the International Mathematical Olympiad. To pull that off, they used two models, Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry 2. And as you can see, just six months ago, they were already close to reaching gold medal level performance. Now, with this latest Alpha Geometry 2 update, it looks like they finally crossed that threshold. I'll leave a link to the paper if you want to dive into some of the technical aspects of this achievement, but the key takeaway here is just how insane this accomplishment really is. To put it into perspective, Alpha Geometry 2 solves 42 out of 50 of all 2000 to 2024 IMO geometry problems, thus surpassing an average gold medalist for the first time ever. This means that DeepMind's AI isn't just competing with the world's top young mathematicians, it's actually outperforming them in one of the most challenging areas of mathematics. Pretty insane. In other news, Perplexity now offers file and image uploads with an expanded context window of 1 million tokens. So, I mean, not much else to say here, just a little update from Perplexity. Now, we have to talk about OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sutskever's new startup, Safe Superintelligence, or SSI. They are currently in talks to be valued at $20 billion, which would be quadruple the company's $5 billion valuation from its last funding round in September. That's September 2024. The reason this number is so wild is because this company literally doesn't even have a product or even a roadmap really. On their official website, which is just this one page, all they basically state is that they have started the world's first straight shot SSI lab with one goal and one product, a safe super intelligence. So how can a company who doesn't generate and doesn't plan to generate any revenue whatsoever be valued so highly? Two words, Ilya Sutskever. This guy is a legend. He is him, as they would say. They mention he was an early advocate for scaling up models, which ultimately led to the creation of ChatGPT. Suchkever was also early in seeing the potential ceiling of such an approach due to the dwindling pool of available data to train models. Recognizing the importance of putting in resources in the inference stage, or the stage of AI when a trained model draws conclusions, he founded the team that worked on what would become OpenAI's latest series of reasoning models, setting a new research direction that has been widely followed. So not only did he play a massive role in the creation of ChatGPT, but he also essentially discovered the second scaling law that gave rise to OpenAI's reasoning models, or their O series models. We can only imagine what he's working on now behind closed doors at SSI, with seemingly infinite amounts of funding and zero external pressure. I hope we can get some insight into what's actually going on there soon. Meanwhile, another co-founder of OpenAI, John Schulman, who initially left OpenAI to work on AI alignment at Anthropic, has decided to now leave Anthropic after five months to join former OpenAI CTO Mira Muradi's new startup. 
Now, not much is known about Mira's startup, but what we do know is that she has poached roughly 10 to 15 researchers and engineers from top companies like OpenAI, Character AI, Google DeepMind, and now Anthropic. So it looks like they are still in the process of putting together a team and a roadmap here, but definitely excited to see what they come up with, especially with all the talent she's been able to acquire. Finally, there was one more thing I wanted to show you guys before we end off the video. Andre Karpathy, another OpenAI co-founder, funnily enough, who you may know from his days at Tesla, released this three and a half hour long video explaining in depth how LLMs work. Now, for anyone who's serious about learning how to use or build with AI, I highly recommend you set aside some time to watch this video. I've been watching it in segments given how long it is, and it's just amazing to hear directly from someone who is actively working on this stuff. Anyways, that is all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.